Welcome back to Hustling Horsepower. Today we're working on the four bar setup, the strut bars, wishbone, all that stuff. A bunch of fabrication stuff that uh, unfortunately you just can't buy at the uh, local Walmart. Guys, as always, um, I appreciate y'all following along. Any messages, any questions on the process of doing this stuff, send me a message. You're going to see us at the track before too long. So where we're going here is uh, I squared these up, okay? There's these, uh, there's marks right here. That's the mark that uh, happens when you put it in the tubing burner. Now they're both, uh, I made both, both these probably both 90 degrees. Really what I did there is I made those two marks. Um, we got this lined up. Unfortunately, the camera died, so we didn't get that on film. But me and Maddie got this, our positioning right there, right? So now what I did is I used my square, lined these two up, went through here and, you know, set my, set my zero to the center of the hole. And now I know both of these are at the same angle or same height as our bend here. And now of course they're opposite because this one goes this way and that one faces this way. We need to go pick ourselves out another, uh, another one of these bushings. So drawer of junk. There he is. We got our half 20 bushing for our shock mount. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a drill bit big enough to fit this guy, and our step bit was uh, too long to fit there. So, uh, I made it work. I ground the damn thing down. Now we're going to go in here, we're going to drill this out, and that's going to be real fun because using a step bit kind of angry when you're drilling the damn things. So when you just uh, drill this out, sometimes I go through and I'll mark what it is. That one right there we need to go to. Ow. Jesus. Step. Now, we need to just go a little bit more. So personally, I like doing the finishing touches just with a, a good deburring bit. When you're using one of these deburring bits to open up a hole, you need to hold constant pressure. So you need to hold the same pressure this way as you do this way, as you do this way, as you do this way. Otherwise, you're gonna get a you're gonna get to a hole that's really um, kind of screwed up. We don't want to smash our bushing up here, so thread in thread in a bolt. There she is. That'll be our other side. So now guys, this is gonna get tape welded into here. And this will get sleeved into here. And it'll work out guys like a big happy family. This will sit in here. Kinda like that. So, but this is probably gonna get cut on an angle like this. Then I'll weld a um, bracket more or less that comes around here and then folds around on the other side. Now we have a third shock that we're gonna be using and it's gonna be kind of like a kind of like a strut car. So uh, there'll be a couple brackets on top here that go from this one to that one. I'll have to have Maddie help me in the morning on that. Who might call it a call it a night? Something's not right here. Well guys, Maddie was in a roundabout way correct we got our dowels lined up we got our lines lined up well guess what nick screwed up an eighth inch longer i guess we'll have to fix it no we do we'll just have to shorten it a little bit just gonna mark this we know the angle's dead nuts so we're just gonna go through and That right there, we make that line disappear, we should be in good shape. And uh, these are our fish mounts that are gonna mount to the bottom of our K member over here. So I'll come over here and we'll show you how these are gonna mount. Of course, they're gonna drop right onto, right onto this K member here. So, then they'll come up and they'll feed up into shocks. So, there we are. Well guys, we got some issues going on here. It looks all wanked up, right? It's all screwed up looking. That shock's outside the body. This shock's inside the cowl. But everything measures out freaking perfectly. Our body is offset probably about an inch, I don't know, inch and a half. 
towards the driver's side. Don't ask me how. So guys, um, this front hand, I think it's wrong. So we're gonna have to take this off and take it apart and cut the welds that I just welded last night and go through and redo everything, so. Well guys, it looks pretty symmetrical now. I'm freaking wild looking. Now I just need to make everything else fit. Well guys, yours truly, royally, royally screwed up. So I'm out here and I gotta cut all these welds in here. Cut all the welds out back in there and cut all the welds there and cut all the welds there to separate this damn thing. So here goes nothing. Six hours later. We're gonna get there. Well guys, this is a real freaking mess that I got myself into. But we're gonna get out of it. I'm gonna use this cable to extend our ground for our plasma cutter. Since we're working in the driveway like a bunch of freaking yahoos. We're just about ready. We got that all hooked up. I'm gonna go get myself some op protection because it's not as bright as welding, but it's still quite bright. Strong strong here. I think we need to get under the desk. All right, we're gonna go to break. Uh, we'll, we'll be, be right, right back, back after we'll be right this. Back. Wow. So guys, it's really hard to see, but I'm using the plasma cutter and I'm cutting just on the opposite side of the weld. Um, when cutting on the upper opposite side of the weld, where it's not a continuous piece of metal, I guess you could say, where it's not 100% solid, in doing so, the heat doesn't transfer into the back side of the other piece that you welded the two pieces to together, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna put you guys back in the house, right in the garage here. I'm gonna try to zip this apart before I get completely soaked. Good enough. Can you tie my shoe for me? Why the f am I tying your shoe? Well, because I'm holding the camera. Thanks. You know what we're going to do here? What? We're going to try to get this in here, okay? And set it on top of here, okay? Okay. Where do you want me? Guys, it sure ain't there yet. What's a whole lot closer? Well, guys, time to work in the shop a little bit. We're gonna make it work. So, uh, I just went through and I packaged everything up that I ordered. So, um, all the like um, rod ends, all the like brackets. Same brackets. 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 Same brackets. 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 To do our wishbone setup. So guys, um, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna utilize the lower four bar mounts as our pickup points for the legs of our wishbone. Now there'll be a rod in here. If some of you guys don't understand um, exactly what a wishbone is or how it works, um, you got two points with two rod ends on it that are adjustable. So you can lengthen this leg and if you lengthen like that leg over there, the axle, whether it's your rear axle or in our case, the front axle, will move forward. And it uh, articulates um, the pivot point on how your axle rotates. So we gotta go and fit these guys on here. Now I ordered them and I ordered them wrong. Well guys, I think I found something that matches our radius on our uh, on our front axle here. I'm gonna mount our rod end up here in the center of the axle. I'll we'll probably, uh, actually probably angle it down a little bit. But what's gonna happen here is the way the uh, wishbone works, it's a it's a Y type thing, like a wishbone, right? So you got like a V uh, point coming off of there and a point coming off of there and a, basically a non-adjustable point up here. Now you go and uh, 
This is a slip joint, so this can articulate. If you lengthen this one, of course, this side of the axle moves forward. If you lengthen that one, this side of the axle moves forward, shorten it backwards. So this is able to make your axle square with your chassis. Now we got it all jigged up so that it should be 100% dead on. It's pretty much dead on. When you get to fabbing. I'm TIG welding these on there. And that fit right there is hideous. Fortunately, it's for a three inch tube and we got a two inch, two inch uh, tube guide beam axle here. So let's get to work. Well guys, here goes nothing. We gotta figure out how deep we gotta go to be able to get this arch right. That right there will give us about an eighth inch of clearance before, between the, the hymen end and the axle. Plenty of room for it to articulate. These flip wheels are such a pain in the ass when they're brand new. But once you break them in, oh, they're nice. Oh, they're pretty damn nice. They're pretty damn close. It's not quite there yet. So guys, put a nice little chamfer on these so uh, while I'm welding, like a really uh, little bit easier to dig into it. We'll be welding these with a little thicker filler rod, but uh, I mean, they fit, they fit pretty nice. It might look like a small gap there, but uh, it's, the, uh, it's the chamfer that I put into it so we could really sink the weld in there. See like here, I got them on it like that. Gotta be lower than that. I gotta get it down here like this. Well guys, that plan didn't really work out, but it wasn't wasted because we will be using it later. It's just, uh, we gotta do a couple other things first. Time to do the upper bars. I need to decide what way I'm gonna do this. Hate when that happens. Uh, I sure hate when it happens too. Oh yeah, that's gonna fit like a glove, folks. More to go. I want to see some uh, some ingenuity right here. Here we go. Redneck engineering. We got our piece here. Got our half inch socket. Fits pretty damn tight in there. No shaking, right? Now we got our, our hole punch fits in here. Pretty damn tight. We slide that in there and that in there. And we got ourselves a makeshift centering die. Boom. All we gotta do is whack it. Boom, 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 boom. All I gotta do is give it one good whack. So here goes. It doesn't, it doesn't protrude a lot. Could have gone with a deep well socket, but should work just fine. Should work just fine. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see it in there. But there is a dimple day in there. Dead center. It's more accurate than uh, I can drill. I'll tell you that. So we're gonna roll with it. Time to drill out our upper hole, and then we're gonna throw our uh, piece in there and get after it. Oh yeah. Now I got a we got a small gap to fill. But it's uh, very much there. Now we need to set our depth on this, mark it, and cut it. This right here, added weight. So we're getting rid of it. See how that just slides in there like that? You know the bushing and everything is in there dead nuts. So I guess we're going to go to the other side. And then uh, tack it in. This up through here. So now we got our steering shaft in here, right? Nice straight bar. Because who's going to have a steering crooked shaft? But if you don't know if your bar straight, just put it on a flat surface and roll it. It goes like wah, 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 wah. You know, you got an issue. Top. Driver. 
Now we need to figure out how much I want to cut off here. we we'll probably cut. I'm not gonna cut this completely flush, but that's gonna be our minimum mark in there. Is our depth, All right? But I want to give a little bit of meat on there. So we'll probably cut, I don't know. We'll probably leave a, probably about 3 16ths of an inch or so there. Let's see how close we got. Hmm. It wasn't bad. But it, it walked a little bit on us right there, so. We're just gonna punch that up. It's a rainy day, folks. Let's see what Nick's doing in the garage. Hi. What you working on? Full bar setup. Ready? You come over here and you see how close we are. Do your deal, babe. You gotta see how close we are. Okay? We'll see how we'll see how talented you are. What the bar? Well, here. I got my own work. Are we good or are we good? Look at that. Pull that out. Pull that bolt out. Pull it back in. Now, are we good? Pull it back in. Are we good or are we good? I'm good. Bro. I don't know about you. I don't know you, but I know about this. Okay. It needs to come out like a sixteenth of an inch. Boom! Oh. Money! You did a good job, babe. Thanks. So did you. Oh, thanks. Pack that sucker in there. Pack that sucker in there. That one right there was about as good of a tank as yours. Mm -hmm. Oops. You didn't hold the trigger long enough. Oh, babe. You're learning. Come in here and let me take some pictures. Let, let me show them how damn good we are. Here you go. They're think, gonna think we're being cocky in here. Well, folks, sometimes you're just lucky. All right, so what do you think? Looks good. That was hard welding these things with the front end down. Well, guys, I got that center section all knocked out. So, uh, we're back in business again, I hope. I'm just gonna come in here nice and square. Boom, right on the line, perfect. So we know I was gonna have to go buy something like that. Now I'm gonna take weld this on here, of course, but uh, That'll give me a nice little tack to work with. Well guys, I just mocked up the old uh, Flaming River steering rack. It's the same rack that we'll be using on this car as well. But I could do the steering shaft. I have options. Steering, check. Should be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue. Ah, I might change my mind. Might think of a better way to do this. Might cut off the steering rack and remount it. Probably not, but it's a possibility. I do stuff like that quite often. Hey guys, I appreciate you following along. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not the best at explaining all this stuff, especially when I'm half asleep. But the uh, the work that's getting done here is it's done right, I promise you that. Truth be told, we're not too far away from uh, getting this car completely out there and racing. But these videos are a little bit behind. I hope you uh, learned something. Remember, if you have any questions or anything, that shoot me a message on Facebook or on the YouTube channel here, and I'm usually pretty decent on responding. But I appreciate you all following along. Thank you very much.